Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Molten Modular. Today, we're looking at the very impressive looking Nifty Keys. Nifty Keys is a MIDI controller keyboard with an integrated Eurorack row and power supply. It has multiple channels of control voltage and gate. It has modulation, aftertouch, LFOs, multiples and mixing, and all sorts of other bits and pieces, which will bring together the idea of modular as a synthesizer. You can essentially build your own synthesizer. That's the idea. I mean, modular has always been about that. It's always been about selecting bits and pieces and putting it together. But what the Nifty Keys does, what it projects towards you is this idea of absolute intention. The idea of building a voice, two voices, up to four voices of synthesis within this keyboard structure. Now you may be thinking you've seen this before and perhaps you have because previous to this, the Waldorf KB37 sort of gave a birth to this idea of a keyboard with integrated Eurorack. But the Nifty Keys is, is cheaper. It has more channels, more facilities, more abilities and is also available now. So what does it sound like? Well, it can sound like anything you like depending on what modules you put in it, of course. I've put in kind of a, a three voice thing where I've got a, an oscillator filter VCA sort of three times completely mismatched and different and it sounds a bit like this with with modular is that it tends to have become less about the keyboard and this flips that on its head quite nicely I mean of course we have we have keyboards we inject keyboards into these things all the time but modular traditionally has been a mix of things I mean if you look at something like the ARP 2500 it had a keyboard Moog modular had a keyboard but more of the west coast stuff the bookler stuff there was never any any sort of sense of a keyboard anywhere. And so when we find ourselves in Eurorack, which is which is stolen and taken from all sorts of places, bundles itself together in all sorts of influences, we find that the keyboard has largely been de-emphasized, to say the least. And we use little sequences and we use other bits and pieces to perform and to generate and to move and to modulate. And so when you bring a keyboard back in to that situation, it's it's strange. It's a bit disorientating. It's a bit like, so what am I trying to achieve? Again, I'm trying to achieve a, a synthesizer voice, a traditional, you know, stepping through of a voice. But, but of course, again, it doesn't have to be that. You could fill this full of effects modules and simply use it as a case to run other stuff while you use this as a MIDI controller. It's entirely up to you. You can stick in a single oscillator with a whole range of other weird things going on that you can tie into the different zones and CV outputs of of the nifty keys. So don't for any moment get pulled into the idea that what I've done here is what should be done or what could be done or what you could do. And in fact, I will change this around a little bit during this video, hopefully in order to show off perhaps different things that you can do. But what I have got is three voices, as I say, connected to three of the four channels of CV and gate in order to play them together currently in unison, but there are a lot more things you can do than that. So what I'll do, I'll bring you in a bit closer and we'll just have a look to see if the sort of things that this could offer, to see if it's something which would really bridge the gap for you between keyboard playing and modular. I mean, maybe this could be a fabulous way of starting to get into it because you can design exactly what you want your synthesizer to be. And that is, that is very interesting. Or it could be an expansion to your system. It gives you more room for your modular. You can start modulating into other bits of modular. And then of course it's a MIDI controller keyboard. So it could replace any other controller keyboard in your system with the added bonus of having all this modular rigmarole stuck into it as well. Lots of different scenarios in which this would work. And it's a meaty, heavy, 
you know, solid, solid bit of gear. It really is. It ain't going anywhere. It's not the sort of thing you'd pack into your backpack and then take to a gig necessarily. You would need to think a little bit more about that if you're going to move it around. But suffice to say that it is nicely put together, solid, sturdy, and impressively, impressively rigid. So come in, let's have a look. So let's, let's have a look then. Pitch bend modulation wheels, yeah, we understand that all right, but also the mod wheel can become an LFO. With a simple function switch, you've then got an LFO coming out of here, which you can apply to anything you want. You've got an arpeggiator plugged in, which I'll show you in a moment, with a latch key, which we like, and uh, octave selects and the magic function key, which flashes away down here, which gives us the clock, as well as providing us access to an entire sort of function layer which is layered across the keyboard. You can see all of these functions all the way along here. Every key has a special thing that it can do, which we'll come to as we go through the system. So along the top, we've got the four channels of CV and gate. One, two, three, four. I'm not even using the fourth one. I've only got room for three, I think, at the moment, depending on the width of your modules. So each one of these can be played either individually or together. You can split and you can layer all sorts of interesting things like this. So it's a four channel CV and gate controller, which is impressive. The uh, the Waldorf one, the, the KB37, was only really one channel. It had nine in total uh, CV outputs, which you could use for all sorts of different things. But you could only really, there's only really one gate, so you could only really run a single voice at the time, whereas this can do up to four. This little section over here, you can tap out velocity after touch. The keyboard is after touch compatible, channel after touch. There's your modulation wheel output. You've also got clock reset and an expression pedal that you can plug in the back. Nice. Over here, you've got a couple of multiples which are very useful. And then you have the output section. You've got out one and out two, and you've got two summing inputs that go to both of those. They come out the back on proper jack cables, out one on one mono output, out two on another mono output. That's also reflected in the headphone output for which you've got a separate control here, as well as the main output. The only slight weird thing is that with the headphones, out one and out two are panned heavy left and, and full right. So, if you're only using a, a single monophonic output, you only get it in one ear, but you can sort of get around that by patching the out of out one into out two, and then you get it in both ears. But it's, it's just slightly weird. I would have liked to have seen a mono input, which gives you a stereo output, you know, or a you know, mono output to both ears on the headphone. But I've kind of got around that because I'm going through the frequency central stasis leak, which has given me a stereo output. And so that, I'm patching into output one and output two, and that's giving me a stereo output out of the back and also out of the headphones. So using my crazy arrangement of modules, let's just go through a couple of the features. <laughs> so what have I done? So as I say, I've got three voices set up. So I've got the Captain Big O going into the filter. I've got the Osiris wavetable going into the Fusion VCF. I've got the STO going into the Instruo filter. And then I've got Veils over here acting as a VCA. So I can give you those individually by turning down the VCA over there. Here's the Captain Big O. Cyrus. Now what I've done, I've attached aftertouch on the keyboard to the to the uh, Wave X control, and so it's pushing through those wave tables as I push down on the keyboard. But I can easily plug that into something else, like the tomber amount. <laughs> or 
I could do something like take the velocity, plug that into the Waverly table. So it depends on how hard I hit. As well as the aftertouch. Let's take the aftertouch out for a moment because that's a bit too weird. And I've got this going through the Fusion uh, VCF 2 or 3, I think it is actually. This has got a little bit of recorded modulation going on, so that's moving the cutoff filter forward. thing is is that it's really enjoyable to play it feels really nice but also I very rarely play modular like this and so it's it's become completely fascinating I mean I've done an entire video review on the Osiris and I don't think I plugged in a keyboard once I don't quite remember I think I was always sequencing it or arpeggiating it Number three, I've got the STO going through something over here. Now I could use, for instance, the modulation wheel to affect the shape. The keyboard is currently set into one voice mode, which means everything happens at once. So I turn the arpeggiator on, put that onto latch, put in something, you know, fantastic. You can change the range on that. I can start bringing back the other bits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Now, there's various, various functions in order to, to change how the arpeggiator is working. For instance, you've got up, down, up and down, random, and also sequencer, which is where you can put in a bunch of notes, and then that does its thing. So let's try that out. But this, for this, I'm just going to highlight the function button, which is here. I mean, this is what rules the entire functionality layer of the keyboard. You've got arpeggiator, mod wheel stuff, clock divisions, voicing stuff here, transpose, and also an auto chord over this end of stuff. You can also select numbers for channel numbers and other other crazy bits and pieces. In fact, if you ever get lost, Create Audio have supplied this magic overlay which gives you exactly what all the functions do, which is just fabulous. This sort of thing should come with everything. You stick it on your wall, you'll never lose where you are again or have to delve into the manual which is a fantastic fantastic thing we like that a lot but i'm going to keep that over there so i can refer to it brilliantly just placed there like like a boss maybe that that might work that might work but it is also labeled more or less that just gives you slightly more information so in order to make these functions happen you press the function key and it lights and then you press the thing you want to happen. And if it gives you one flash, that's an on. If it gives you two flashes, that's an off, I think. Or you just press it again to get out of the thing that you're doing. So if we go to our arpeggiator, for instance, let's just set it running first. Oh, need a latch on. I'll press the function key and I can make it go up on this key here. Can you see that? Not quite out of shot. That's up. Now you see, I've made the classic mistake. <laughs> now, the, the function thing works, works very well. It, it does do exactly what you think it does, but you just have to be mindful of whether you have this active or not. And it's very easy to forget. Like there, I just wanted to go through the arpeggiator modes, but because I'd made a selection, it then auto selected itself out of function mode to let me do what I wanted to do. And so when I went to press the next function, I'd forgotten to press that, and so I ruined my arpeggiation. Are you with me? So let me stick the thing back in. Oh, latch again. Well, that'll do. So function, down. And now it's gone out of function mode over here. So in order to do the next one, we need to press that again, and then press up and down. That's nice. There's a random. playing with three voices at once. <laughs> I mean, obviously, if I was doing this properly, if I wanted to build a synthesizer, I wouldn't use three completely different voices. I would use something that's very similar so that I can get a, you know, a good bit of unison going on, some detuning and have it make some kind of logical sense. This is completely illogical, but that's also completely brilliant. <laughs> Now I think for sequencer, I press sequencer is now waiting for some notes. So I could put something in like that, and with a bit of luck, it will now play that as an arpeggiator. That's awesome.
Lovely. Next section is the mod wheel, because the mod wheel can double as an LFO. So you either have it on manual, or I can hit the function button and turn it into an LFO. So now, whatever is coming out of the, the mod output, I can plug into something, and it will it will do the LFO type thing. So, <laughs> I don't know. I've got everything already plugged in, mostly. So let's... So let's plug it into the, the filter of the filter. And you can change the mode of the um, LFO depending on what waveform you want. If we go to our crib sheet over the back, it will tell us which one it is. So I can hit function, change the triangle. Again, the function button has deselected itself, so I have to press it again to go for ramp. Press it again for square. Press it again for random. Got the right knob over here. And then the amount can be dictated by the modulation wheel. Yeah, got it. It's just fascinating putting these things together. Right, we'll avoid clock division because, you know, that's just clocking stuff. That's fine. The voicing is interesting stuff. This is where you can start to use these voices together or separately. Hmm. Okay, so three completely <laughs> bizarrely unmatched voices playing in unison in one voice. Now I can change that to two voice to make it duophonic. Two voice. Fascinating. Turn it on to three voices. I should be able to kind of play a chord. <laughs> the voices are in there somewhere. Now, in the manual, it talks about how you know, the distribution of notes in that uh, on on your first note, you get the first one happening. And then when you pray, press, press another note, you'll get the next voice happening. Press another note, and you should get the final voice happening. So that's my three voices. It also depends on how legato you are, I think. Because <laughs> the first one's not being re-triggered because I've held it down the whole time. So if this was on a, a long thing... Oh, it's just so brilliant. Because it's, it's weird. I mean, I, I know there's a system in there. I know I should know exactly what it is doing. But I love the fact that I have no clue. I have no clue what's going to come next. <laughs> and 
And that just makes it fascinating. Right, the, the next thing, there's you can do this up to four voices because there's a fourth one that I haven't plugged in yet because I just didn't have the room in this particular one. I mean, look how wide these two filters are. That's crazy. If I was to put in something like the nice wasp filter or you know a smaller uh, VCO instead of, the, instead of the big O, I could easily get four voices in there. But, you know, I haven't. And in a bit, oh, I've got a, a wonderful Poly 8, 8 VCO module over there which i'll plop in and then we'll have a look at how well it does the whole polyphonic thing which i think will be interesting and also there's an auto chord over here where you know you create a chord and you can play a chord on one finger great but in this current state with three weirdly different voices you're not perhaps getting the full effect you're getting a different effect and i'm into that different effect you know Fantastic. So the last bit in the voicing is split mode, where you can split the keyboard either here, here, or here, and you have two voices on one side, two voices on the other. But to be in this mode, I think I need to be in one voice mode, like so. Then I can hit split and say where I want it to split, which is there. I should get two voices down here, the first two, and the third one up there. Obviously, if I had four voices, then I'd be getting two voices here and two voices here. So you can absolutely have two different things going on. Which also reminds me about the arpeggiator, because you can use that on different voices differently as well. If we go back to that for a second. Let's put the arpeggiator on down here. <laughs> All right, so I've got everything going on at once. Down a bit. So what I want to do is for channel three, I don't want that to be using the ARP. So I can do that here, according to my crib sheet, it's this button here. Turn that on there. It gives me two flashes, which means it's off. So hopefully, oops, I did something else. Okay, the arpeggiator is off at the top end. So it's on down the bottom. Across the streams. <laughs> but you get the idea, right? You get the idea. And so purely with the, the keyboard and the modular, you have a lot of scope uh, for interesting voicing, for arpeggiation, even you know, a mild bit of sequencing, modulation. All of it in pulled in together within this particular unit so you don't have to spill out into other things you don't have to have other modular you can have an absolute ball playing with a couple of voices worth of stuff and the keyboard and have things going on separately over here and over here however you want you can mix and match you can unison you can go up into voices and back down again turn arpeggiators on and off play things separately <laughs> It's just fantastic. And you and you can harness that velocity. You can harness the aftertouch. You can harness the LFOs coming out, the clock, the speed, the glide. You know, there's a lot of really good, solid stuff in here that's going to give you a massive amount of enjoyment. And we haven't even talked about MIDI yet. OK, a little bit of MIDI then. I've attached this to my Surface Pro 8. It's not an iPad. Don't get excited. It's just a Surface Pro. But of course you can connect it to anything which accepts USB MIDI or 5-pin DIN MIDI as it has 5-pin DIN MIDI on the back. 
I thought I would just do a quick blast of, uh, of a piano using the keyboard just to see how responsive the keyboard is because it's impossible to know when using modular because the level of you know velocity and things like that aren't really there. So let's just have a quick go. Yeah, it, it's nice. It's got a nice feel to it. You can hear it, certainly, you know, it, it's, it's thumping away, but it's not the noisiest controller I've ever heard. Let's try something a little bit synthia. Touch. Okay, back to just the nifty keys, back to using just the, all your output here. I've got three voices. I've turned on Bitwig and via MIDI, we are going to sequence this from Bitwig on my Surface Pro 8. So each of the CV gate channels can be set to its own MIDI channel number. So I've got MIDI channel number one, two, and three for all three of them. And I have three tracks set up. It should be, should be that easy. <laughs> That's kind of what we're hoping at this point. So if I select my first channel there, set up to channel one, I can create my sound just on this voice. Go to channel two. This is the Osiris. Channel three. It's my STO over here. So I haven't really given this any thought, like metronome and stuff, but I imagine that if I set one of these going, I could record some things and then layer and record beside them. Local is off. You press the function button and press down here in order to turn local off. So everything is routing into Bitwig, back out again to the three individual parts. So with a bit of luck, <laughs> Something like that. Go to channel two.
<laughs> See, that's like nothing you you could have possibly imagined would have come out of here. So, you know, simple um, MIDI to CV conversion coming straight from the door out of these uh, four channels, three channels, running into my modular to create this fantastic bridge between MIDI and CV, between the, the digital and the analog, between the software and the hardware. It sits here brilliantly. This sort of arrangement where I can be playing software synthesizers, drums and samples, but also working in modular, all within the same space, without having to have cabinets of stuff around the place or complicated MIDI to CV conversion. It's, it's there. It makes sense. It makes sense because it connects your keys to your modular, uh, you know, in a straightforward way. And more than modular, more than software. I could connect to hardware synth as well. I've got MIDI from that coming in everything it could easily be uh, the center of operations for whatever it is you're trying to do so there you are <laughs> Whistle stop tour of the nifty keys it's an extraordinary thing I, I love the way it pulls me in into playing and thinking about modular differently a again differently I'm, I'm always looking for that i always appreciate that that push into kind of a new area i mean i've used keyboards and, and bits and pieces you know controller keyboards with my modular usually to set something up or to play it's one individual part along with other things which are all pulsing along by themselves you can do that with this, but this also, you know, it, it pulls you to extend into thinking more about how a synthesizer works, more about how voicing works. And that's interesting. So I'm not just sort of finding blips and bleeps and beats and bits and pieces that I'm manipulating and putting together. I'm thinking a lot more about how something is enveloped, how a filter changes over time, how two things work together. I mean, in that fabulous voicing mode is is just the best <laughs> change everything each individual voice individually it reminds me of the the eight voice i've just brought up on here the oberheim where you have these eight sems that you're playing with individually that's kind of what i've got going on here in a smaller more eclectic form where i've got completely weird bits of modular all doing their own thing but all doing their own voice which you're then, you know playing and capturing together in both perfect harmony and dissonance and craziness because you have to tune things you have to keep that together you've got different things going on nothing is nothing is certain in this sort of place so it is brilliant it makes me think and create differently i've thoroughly enjoyed having these particular bits in here and there's no reason why i can't have other bits in here it doesn't have to stay the same it can completely evolve and change as i as i want it to so it's, it's a remarkably creative little space, you know, in a solid, nice feeling synthesizer keyboard. It's great. I love the way it can be that, that bridge between your door and your modular. You know, they're completely at home with one another. I could be doing virtual synths and hardware synths and modular synths and everything very easily all together in a relatively compact space. I mean, as I say, this can be whatever you want. It could just be a bunch of effects. It could be a bunch of modulators that you're using to affect a larger modular. 
It can be effects, just audio effects. You take an audio out of your computer and running it through all of this. Back in again, maybe, or not. It could just be oscillators. Who knows? Whatever it is you want to put in there, you can put in there. It could be all the same thing. So you can create a massive pad, a massive sound, a massive thing that's all happening together all at once. Yeah, really, really interesting. I mean, price-wise, it's around, I think, $550, between $500, $600, something like that, which is you know, significantly cheaper than the Waldorf one was. And for that, you're getting like 200 quid's worth of, of case and power supply, 200 quid's worth of, of uh, controller, and then 200 quid's worth of MIDI to CV. I mean, maybe that's the way to look at it. And that actually makes it you know, quite an affordable, quite a reasonable uh, solution for doing all of those things. Of course the modules are extra <laughs> you got to factor that in as well yeah trying to find any kind of criticism well i mean the function layer the function button function layer is is prone to getting that wrong so i'm pressing it i'm doing something and then i'm doing something else and that's messed up what i was i was doing i mean when i was connecting this to the door i could not get it to work initially because i think i had accidentally pressed functions which had probably moved things to different MIDI channels. So I had to sort of put that back into place and go through those things to make sure that they were in place. So it is completely possible to trip over the function button and how that works. But it's not uncommon to have this kind of functionality spread across a keyboard to avoid having to have lots of extra buttons. And so, you know, it works. I'm just saying that it's also tripper up a ball. And you need a nice firm press on that. Sometimes I press it and it's not lit. And so I'm pressing things and I go, oh, I've ruined it again. Particularly when I'm using the ARP, because I like to set an ARP going and then I like to mess with stuff. And as soon as you don't press that function button correctly, you mess up your ARP, of course. But it's purely just a matter of getting used to the button and that functionality. If I was looking for a way that it could perhaps be improved, it would be to have a proper sequencer inside, you know, a four channel sequencer. So you could, you know, you could stick 16 buttons along this edge here and have that sequencing each voice independently. That that would then make it completely independent of having to run it with a door or anything like that. Although door integration is it's brilliant. It's all there. It all works. It's all MIDI. It's all good. So there you go. That's the nifty keys. I hope that was helpful. I'm going to put in the Poly 8 now and maybe a few other modules just to see how I can create some different sounds and different textures with that. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. Thank you.